It goes without saying that the SCP Foundation has a storied history with ancient anomalous groups of interest. From the metal-worshipping Mechanites, to the fire-loving Brazen Heart, to even the brutal empire of the slave-owning Deva, who swear allegiance to the dreaded Scarlet King. But perhaps the most dangerous and downright disgusting of these groups are the flesh-worshipping, disease-loving, body-warping Sarkists. The Sarkists believe in returning humanity to a nightmarish primordial state. They utilize anomalies to achieve this goal such as the horrible SCP-610, also known as the flesh that hates, a disease that converts human beings into mindless beasts of twisted flesh, driven to spread their disease further and further. The Sarkists were once a world superpower, controlling much of modern-day Russia and Eastern Europe from the holy capital of Aditum, a city ahead of its time, with towering blood-red temples, wide, winding roads, and the castle of Grand Carcist Ion, an immense blistering red and gold structure that was as beautiful as it was imposing. It would only make sense that the former area of the Sarkic Empire would host some of the most ghastly of the Sarkic anomalies. It should not be forgotten that while the Sarkists are a group of interest for the SCP Foundation, they are first and foremost a religion one with ancient practices of blood and human sacrifice. While the SCP Foundation is famed for its containment procedures, when it comes to the likes of actual deity entities, containment isn't quite as straightforward. The standard put it in a box until it stops trying to get out technique just won't cut it. The deities require specific practices that sometimes go against the core values of secure, contain, protect. Take SCP-2845 for example. This entity, known as the Deer, is a being that requires an intense, deadly, and specific ritual to keep it properly contained. The SCP Foundation even had to outsource help in containing this anomaly. Anomalies such as these place the SCP Foundation at a crossroads of action or inaction. And when this issue is combined with a Sarkic anomaly, that could bring catastrophic results should containment fail. They need to make the difficult choice of letting the anomaly stay where it is, without intervention, for the safety of the world. This nightmare started in the year 1916, during the Battle of Transylvania of the First World War. As bullets flew and the smell of smoke pervaded the noses of the scared soldiers, bloodlusting beasts were waiting their time to strike. Staking behind the unnaturally curved trunks of the trees that lived in the nearby Hoya Forest, soldiers, armed with weapons and tactical armor, were quickly and brutally attacked and consumed by entities that would become known as the Pale Men. At the time, not much was known about these Pale Men, and they were believed to be a myth among the local populace, meant to scare invading soldiers from stepping on Romanian land. But when 244 people go randomly missing in a single night, with no obvious signs of death, no bodies ever being found, and reports of pale men dashing through trenches and within the surrounding Hoya forest, the SCP Foundation would surely have to intervene. This would not occur until 1919, however, as World War I raged on, diverting Foundation attention away from these mysterious deaths. Agents Frederick Harper and Reese Gorman, posing as military officials and local law enforcement, began to speak with the locals around the Hoya Forest and the surviving soldiers. While shell shock rocked the soldiers with guilt and terror, Gorman was able to ascertain that the soldiers' stories of the Pale Men were too consistent to be a falsehood created out of stress. The Pale Men were described as living vampires, more bat than human, and deadly fast, appearing in quick flashes before dragging the unsuspecting victims to their untimely deaths within the Hoya Forest. Meanwhile, Agent Gorman spoke with members of a village within the Hoya Forest near the battle site. Their demeanor was cold, which was expected. He was an outsider, speaking rudimentary Romanian in an obviously foreign tongue. The village people claimed ignorance, declaring that they had never heard stories of pale men and did not subscribe to fairy tales. Gorman, realizing he was unwanted, nearly cut his losses before the elder of the village stopped him. This elder, an old man draped in hand-knit scarves and red silks, invited the agent into his home 
and gave him the truth. These villagers were followers of Sarkicism. The home of the Elder was decorated with Sarkic glyphs and paintings detailing the stories of Yaldabaoth, the primary god of the Sarkists, battling Mekain, the legendary broken god. On a lectern sat scrolls and dusty tomes detailing Sarkic history, from former kings to stories of battles that were waged against the Mechanites and Davites. The Elder explained that there was a Sarkic god within the Hoya forest, known as the Mother, who sends out her children to feed and help her grow even larger. The village worshipped the Mother and tried their best to keep her at bay by conducting ritual sacrifices to her and her brood. However, the advent of World War I led to difficulties in containing their rituals as they were living in an active war zone, and the mother's children and their hunger were impossible to control, leading to the unfortunate deaths of the soldiers. Agent Gorman was eventually able to convince the Elder to show them where the mother resided, a temple superficially resembling other Eastern Orthodox monasteries. But this was no house of God that you or I would recognize. On the lower level, it contained an ancient beast, starving for blood and sacrifice. This place soon became designated SCP-2191, otherwise known as the Dracula Factory. New containment procedures were quickly enacted. Twenty armed guards were placed around the temple, with strict orders to dispatch any entity that exits the structure. Standard containment procedures for anomalous buildings were enacted as well, preventing all non-Foundation personnel from entering SCP-2191 and authorizing the use of lethal force when necessary. Access to SCP-2191 has allowed Foundation biologists to research the entities that were known as the Pale Men. These creatures were found to be genetically human, but with a variety of alterations that should have resulted in fatalities. These entities were subsequently designated SCP-2191-1. SCP-2191-1 entities appear to be more bat than human, with large conical ears that end in sharp tips, upturned noses, and the ability to communicate via echolocation. This echolocation ability comes in handy, as SCP-2191-1 are completely blind. Their eyes have recessed into their skulls, and a layer of skin has grown over them. The entities also lack pigmentation, leaving them starky pale, appearing to be made more of porcelain than flesh or bone. These entities are predators, solely hunting living human beings, ignoring human cadavers or any non-human animal. They hunt by spreading through the Hoya forest and chasing their victims. Once caught, SCP-2191 entities will inject their victims with a paralytic agent by stabbing them with a sharp bone that has grown from their wrists. They will then unhinge their jaws, allowing a leech-like entity to exit their mouths and begin the feeding process by latching onto the victim's neck. This leech, designated as SCP-2191-2, will first inject the body with digestive enzymes, converting organ, muscle, and bone into liquid before consuming the resulting fluids. The feeding process can last anywhere from 20 to 50 minutes, depending on the size of its prey. These are highly skilled and sophisticated predators, and while they lack the higher intelligence of non-anomalous humans, they make up for it in ruthless ferocity. It would only make sense that the Foundation would enact strict containment procedures to avoid the loss of human life. But while these containment methods worked for a time, a series of anomalous events connected to SCP-2191 transpired over the next 70 years. The first event was in late September of 1932. The Irasos earthquake devastated the Chalkadiki Peninsula of Greece, leaving houses crumbled, civilians homeless, and causing 490 reported casualties. Surveys of the damage conducted by the Greek government found that 126 people who lived in the affected areas could not be accounted for. The question now arises. Where are these missing people? Seven years later in 1939, this time in Turkey, the Erzincan earthquake struck the country, resulting in the catastrophic deaths of approximately 33,000 people. Among the survivors, reports of a great serpent were given from all who witnessed the event. 
The foundation then intervened, posing as members of an international disaster recovery agency. Reports from the locals remained the same. A great serpent, a deep red and black in color and incomprehensively massive, casting dark shadow miles long rose from the ground at the onset of the earthquake and writhed in the air as the earth shook. For a period of three years, nothing related to SCP-2191 transpired, and the Foundation believed that the anomaly had gone dormant. That was until an earthquake struck Varanza, Romania in 1940. While casualties were low compared to the earthquake in Turkey, reports from local survivors had repeated claims that pale men attacked the fleeing people as the earthquake occurred, chasing after them and tackling them, never to be seen again. With a large-scale event like this and potential witnesses to anomalous beings, the SCP Foundation was risking a broken masquerade scenario should the information spread. Broken masquerade scenarios are considered an XK-class scenario by the SCP Foundation, and as such, they employed a media blackout and had newspapers state that the witnesses of these vampire attacks were nothing but superstition. In March 1953 in Turkey, the Yenis Goyen earthquake led to the deaths of over 1,000 people. The Foundation, once again posing as members of an international disaster recovery agency, interviewed survivors and attempted to find any connection to the preceding events. Reports from survivors again told a consistent story. They witnessed the arm of a blood-red octopus rupture from the earth when the quake began, behaving similar to the great serpent writhing in the sky, and reported that pale men were seen attacking survivors in the night as they searched for places to sleep. These sightings of pale men persisted for over a month after the earthquake, before amnestics could be distributed. Another event occurred in March of 1977 in Romania. It was a similar story to all the others, with over 1,500 civilians dying as a result of the Varancia earthquake and 800 civilians being declared missing. Foundation officials embedded in the Romanian government were told that reports of pale men and tendrils pulling victims beneath the ground began to surface, leading to media blackouts and amnestic distribution as panic spread throughout the region. The Foundation couldn't figure out what was causing these events. When they began instituting the containment procedures around SCP-2191, no SCP-2191-1 entities were able to exit the temple without being quickly dispatched. So how were these events occurring, especially in areas so far away from the Hoya Forest? Could it be that the large creature seen breaching the earth was responsible? The Foundation decided to return to the village that originally told them about the temple to interview their elder once more. Dr. Judith Lowe was given permission to conduct the interview. She was a senior employee of the SCP Foundation and had multiple doctorates in Sarkic history and Sarkic anthropology. Her expertise in the subject was unmatched. Dr. Lowe had written multiple studies on the Sarkic culture and understood the only thing that satiates Sarkic gods, blood. With this knowledge in mind, Dr. Lowe met with Draga Negrescu, the current elder of the village. Draga was an old woman wrapped in the red silks and scarves as the previous elder. Dr. Lowe began to interview and jumped immediately into the subject, asking Draga what she could tell her about the temple. Draga replied, stating that the temple was home of what they called the Mother. The Mother was not unlike a queen bee, as she sends her drones out to collect blood much like bees collect nectar. Draga continued, stating that her village acted as the beekeepers to the Mother, helping the hive flourish and stay full before the SCP Foundation intervened. Draga expressed that it was imperative that they would be allowed to continue their sacred duty of satiating the mother. Dr. Lowe needed more information on who exactly the mother was. Draga Negrescu told her that the mother was once a princess and the daughter of a Sarkic blood empress in Aritum, the ancient Sarkic capital. She was a strikingly beautiful girl, wearing the finest of clothes and had long, dark red hair, a trait common to those with ancient royal Sarkic bloodlines. When she walked through the streets of Aditum, all eyes turned toward her. The Grand Karsist Ion was struck by her beauty and kidnapped the princess, claiming her as his own. She became his mistress. While she first hated her position, she slowly grew to worship Grand Karsist Ion as a god. While Grand Karsist Ion is seen as a deity now, he was not during his reign as the king of the Sarkic Empire. 
The princess begged to bear Ion's children as a result. She was blessed by the Grand Carcist and was planted in the Koya forest to grow large and wide. Ion commanded the princess to bear as many children as she could muster, and she did. The princess birthed Ion's children, the Pale Ones, for all of eternity, and would let them feed as Ion would want. Draga stated that she and her village are no different than the Pale Men, as they were tasked with keeping the mother fed and satisfied. Draga then let slip this chilling remark. The mother and the land are now one. Her earthen womb swells, and soon she will rupture. All around you is tinder for the gods. It seems as though the Foundation's containment efforts led to the deadly earthquakes and deaths of thousands of people. By stopping the practices of this village to contain the mother through ritual, they had potentially caused an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario. One question remained, though. Where is the mother? An investigation into the tunnel system located below SCP-2191 would lead to the answer. Mobile task force units that specialized in underground exploration, such as the Mole Rats, were sent to the tunnel system below the temple, armed with weapons to dispatch any loose SCP-2191-1 entities. These agents discovered a grisly sight, a massive writhing mass below SCP-2191. Researchers, believing Draga's story, ascertained that this was the Mother, and designated it as SCP-2191-3. This entity is a massive blood-red organism, buried deep beneath the Earth, where SCP-2191 stands. The true size of the entity has proven entirely impossible to measure, but root-like appendages have been found to extend throughout the tunnels below the Earth. These appendages were found to secrete a toxic, highly corrosive acid. SCP-2191-3 uses this fluid to create tunnels, which explains the odd tunnels below SCP-2191-2. Measurements place the area SCP-2191 spread to approximately 6,600,000 square kilometers under the Balkan Peninsula. For comparison's sake, SCP-3000, the amnestic-producing eel god Anatashisha, is a measly 900 kilometers in length at maximum. With that in mind, now we can see the gargantuan problem the SCP Foundation is dealing with. SCP-2191-3 is sapient, meaning it has an innate sense of understanding and self-awareness, and it exerts control over SCP-2191-1 and SCP-2191-2 organisms via the release of complex pheromones. SCP-2191-1 entities act as feeder drones for SCP-2191-3. It has since been discovered that civilians native to several isolated villages in the vicinity of the Hoya Forest have actively provided human sacrifices for SCP-2191 as a means of minimizing the seismic activity that occurs when it is famished, and this worked to satiate the entity and prevent further damage to the Earth and its people. The Foundation now stood at the crossroad between active containment and allowing the people who knew and understood the anomaly to contain it themselves. The Foundation motto is secure, contain, protect. However, if they allow Draga Negrescu and her village to continue their sacrifices, they will be unable to fulfill any of these core values. But SCP-2191 will not be wrecking havoc. This dilemma led to the involvement of the O5 Council. A joint statement from them reads, There are some who wish to believe that the Foundation has never nor will ever cater to the designs and desires of an anomalous entity. Foundation efforts to contain SCP-2191 are now thought to have inadvertently led to the deaths of approximately 40,000 people over 45 years. The obvious choice would be to neutralize the threat, and we've tried. The number of civilian and Foundation casualties being well beyond acceptable numbers. In order to contain the larger threat, we must allow it to feed. We are aware of the offense caused by this procedure. This is not the first time, nor it will be the last, that the Foundation has been forced to commit a lesser evil in the prevention of a greater one. We do believe that, in the end, our current method is the most preferable, with regards to both ethics and efficiency. We are fully aware that every sacrifice feeds SCP-2191-3, allowing it and its brood to thrive. But we are not about to sacrifice the entire Balkan Peninsula to neutralize that threat. 
not yet. It was clear that the SCP Foundation had no choice but to allow the villagers who lived around SCP-2191 and the Mother to continue their practices. Upon their involvement, there was catastrophe after catastrophe that would only stop once the correct people, Draga Negrescu and her villagers, could return to their way of life and end this madness. A final containment procedure was ordered as a result. The SCP Foundation would maintain surveillance operations via the use of closed-circuit security cameras and drone footage. All personnel of the SCP Foundation would be prohibited from directly interfering with SCP-2191 or the ritual practices of communities within the vicinity of the Hoya Forest, which include blood or human sacrifices to SCP-2191. Exploration of SCP-2191 would only be allowed by remote-controlled drones. Lethal force is only authorized should SCP-2191 or any of the creatures that live beneath it breach containment. Should the Foundation fail in upholding the ritual practices that keep the Mother at bay, well, Dragon Negrescu said it best. All around them is tinder for the gods. Now go check out SCP-2783 Silent Lamentations of a Clockwork Goddess and SCP-1348 Inner Sanctum for more fascinating anomalous locations.